James White has long had a problem with and been very critical of Molinism and middle knowledge. But listening to a re recent broadcast of his, I realized that James actually believes in middle knowledge and in God actualizing between possible worlds. But before I show this, let me start with James' own definition of middle knowledge. The reason it's called a middle knowledge is that it is a knowledge uh, that is in between these two. It's a knowledge that God has prior to the decree. Make sure you get that part of it. It has to do with knowing what free creatures will do in given conditions. Now, this point. So, according to James' own definition, middle knowledge is God's knowledge of what free creatures would do in any given circumstance, and Molinism is God choosing which of these possible worlds to actuate. Uh, James finds this reprehensible, that God would choose between possible worlds based upon what creatures with free will would choose to do. That limits God's sovereignty. Of course, James conveniently ignores the fact that God's knowledge would include all possible worlds, which would include both worlds that have creatures with free will and creatures without free will. He has knowledge of all worlds. It's just that the Molinist looks at the scriptural evidence and he sees, oh, humans do have free will. So they conclude that the world that God did choose to actuate includes creatures with free will. So he completely ignores that part, but I'll just move on anyways. So sticking just to James' own definition, does James believe that God chooses between two possible worlds based upon how a person might or might not act? Let's see. But I remember uh, years ago debating a, an atheist, and he used the illustration of why we can't call God good. And that is, if you're going by a house and um, you see that the house is on fire and you see an open window and through the window you see a, a baby crib, you know there's a baby in the baby crib, the fire hasn't gotten in the room yet, but it, it will soon. Um, would we call someone good who does not attempt to save that child? And if God could save that child, then we can't call him good. Mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the argument that he used. And then a corollary argument that he used was um, if God knew what Adolf Hitler was going to do, uh, why didn't he cause Adolf Hitler to step off of a curb without looking and get hit by a truck mm -hmm. um, or have a heart attack or something along those lines to, to keep that evil from happening? Similar illustrations because, well, if God has these knowledge, this knowledge, then that makes him accountable for all of these, these things. Um, and I remember looking at the atheist and sort of smiling and saying, how do you know the child in the crib isn't Hitler? And he just, just looked at me like, you can't use my illustrations against me. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> you know, you know uh, it, it's, 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 it, that's not fair. Um, but th the point is that if if God knows those things, if he if he if he knows the the reality of this person's life, um, isn't there actually an element of mercy? If he's not going to extend his mercy to this person, which is which is better, to die as a youth or to die as an old man, having now piled up? A lifetime of sin. Which which is better? So we have two possible worlds, one in which an infant dies young and doesn't pile up a bunch of sins, versus another possible world where the infant lives a long life, piles up a ton of sins, and gets tortured in hell even worse. So God chose the one world over the other world and allowed the infant to die young. Huh! Sounds, uh... A little like middle knowledge and Molinism. If God knows those things, if he if he if he knows the the reality of this person's life, um, isn't there actually an element of mercy? <laughs> That's middle knowledge. <laughs>